All right, welcome everybody who's here. We'll give it another minute and then we'll get started with our presentation. If you need interpretation, just follow the directions on the screen. And Mrs. Hernandez is in the interpretation room. Uh, there's a question on how long this webinar should be, probably anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes, and then we'll stay on to answer any other questions. We will also um, post this um, presentation on our uh, website as well. So if you have to leave early, just know that um, it'll be recorded and available. All right, team, I think we'll uh, get started. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Dina Sellers. I'm the Director of Elementary Education, and this is our TK and Kindergarten Parent Information Night webinar. This is our second webinar that we've done this year. If you attended the webinar in October, pretty much all of the information will be very, very similar. So uh, don't feel the need to stay, but you are welcome to stay if you want to see and hear it all again. Uh, once again, just a reminder that if you would like Spanish interpretation, that you can um, click on the interpretation. It kind of looks like a globe um, and click the Spanish key and that will take you to the interpretation. So I'm going to give everyone here an opportunity to introduce themselves. As, as I shared, I'm Dina Sellers. I'm the Director of Elementary Education for CVUSD. Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Kenny Liu, and I am proud to be our uh, district's Assistant Superintendent of Instructional Services. Good evening, Shauna Ashmore, Director, Student Support Services. We're very happy to have you this evening. Hi, I'm Amy Mills. I'm the Director of Child Development. Good evening, I'm Mary Beth Stovall. I'm a Transitional Kindergarten Teacher on Special Assignment. Good evening, I'm Susan Begg, and I'm a kindergarten teacher for Conejo Valley Unified School District. Hi, I'm Erin Ware. I'm the senior admin assistant for instructional services. And the last person there, it says Maria Melendez, but it is Sandra Hernandez who is here tonight as our interpreter. Thank you, Mrs. Hernandez. All right, Mr. Liu. All right. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to quickly welcome you um, all to tonight's uh, webinar. I know that it will be um, informational and we look forward to answering any of your questions. Before we get started, though, I did just want to, you know, take a brief moment to, um, you know, really uh, welcome you, hopefully, to our school district as we look forward to the, gosh, 20. 23-24 school year. Um, as the Assistant Superintendent of Instructional Services, I have the great opportunity to work alongside such hardworking staff that we have here, as well as throughout all of our schools to proudly serve about um, more than 16,000 students here in Caneo Valley. Um, but in addition to my role here, um, I also am really proud to be a parent of some little ones here in our district too. So I just wanted to share with you that as you're really embarking on this journey as a parent sitting in this webinar here in the middle of January, thinking about next year um, as TK or um, kindergarten, um, I just wanted to share like how exciting the opportunity and adventure um, like that awaits you. Um, you know, you certainly will be in a few months. Uh, you'll be talking to your child about their new best friend, or you'll be working on that, you know, math homework that you thought was easy, but it was probably, it's actually really hard. Um, and, you know, so many fun things as um, our children start their education um, here in Conejo. Um, and you certainly won't be doing it alone. Um, our teachers, um, office staff, um, counselors, uh, everyone at our school sites. We're so uh, happy to work and support our students and our families um, as you embark on this new opportunity. Um, when you come to a new school, you really are coming to a family, a, an organization that has so many opportunities, of course, for kids, but also you as um, a parent or a guardian. That might be, um, you know, volunteering in the classroom, connecting with other parents on a PTA or a PFA, um, joining school site council, um, as well as other opportunities within our school district to be involved and to really um, contribute to not only your child's education, but uh, what we feel like is a great school district. 
So you may be wondering whether or not, you know, CVUSD is the right fit for you. And we really proudly do believe and stand by the belief that uh, we have a fit for every student and for every family. And so I encourage you to, you know, learn more about all of our schools and programs. We're proud of each and every one of them. And we really are happy and so honored to um, you know, serve our diverse students and families as well. So really just on behalf of um, our district staff, as well as um, everyone at our schools, just want to welcome you to this exciting opportunity as we look forward to next school year for um, TK and K. That's all I got, Dr. Sellers. All right. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Uh, so we'll uh, go on to um, our basic information about enrolling your student in TK and kindergarten. Uh, so for neighborhood school enrollment, it begins on January 30th, uh, and you'll just visit our CVU SD website. Um, there is actually a, a county office of education pre-enrollment uh, webpage that's listed there, and you can follow those instructions on how to pre-enroll your student. So traditionally, or maybe in the past, if you had an older student, you might have gone to the school site to begin the registration process. But actually, uh, we begin the registration process online now. You can see at the bottom of this slide the Enroll My Student, and that's what you'll find on our CVUSD home page of our website, that button that says Enroll My Student. It starts there, and it gives you this link for pre-enrollment and also instructions on doing pre-enrollment. And Dr. Sellers, I'm just going to jump in there and recommend that the online pre-enroll be done on a computer or a tablet. The interface is not um, as conducive to enrolling on a cell phone. Also want to let you know that um, once you're in the system, if you're wondering, how do I know my office manager's name and email address, it is embedded in the system for you. And then lastly, if you have any difficulty accessing the online pre-enrollment system, we will have paper enrollment packets at every one of our elementary schools for any family that needs to use a paper pencil packet. We're happy to provide those as well. All right. Uh, I also did want to share with you that um, even if you're going to use the school choice process um, to apply for a school other than your neighborhood school, you still do complete the registration process at your neighborhood school. Um, and all of our neighborhood schools have TK classes this year and will also have TK classes next year. That does not include Earths because Earths is not actually a neighborhood school. Earths is a magnet only school. And so it's important that you complete your registration at your neighborhood school. And once again, there's just a quick picture of what our new CVSD website looks like and that enroll my student button there on our webpage. According to California legislation and um, information provided to us by the California Department of Public Health, uh, we are required to check for immunization records for all incoming uh, students, TK, K, and quite frankly, at all grade levels. Um, so please expect that when you enroll your child, uh, we will be asking for the immunization record. Uh, we will provide you um, access to uh, the links and information via the website so that you can look at exactly what is required based on your child's age and grade. Um, and then if you have any questions on that, you let us know, but I think you'll find the link very helpful. All right, so some other uh, basic information about TK and K enrollment. Uh, so enrollment for the 23-24 school year, as I shared, will be at every neighborhood school site. Final decisions on how many TK and K classes will be at each school site will be made in the spring. Uh, so some schools that may have one TK right now, there may be two TKs at that neighborhood school. Um, some school sites that have two TKs may have three TKs. So um, it really will be determined once in the enrollment process and the school choice process are underway. Um, as far as our age requirements, if you've uh, been paying attention to TK in the state of California, you'll know that our date ranges for TK have been changing uh, to be compliant with the state of California. So for this coming school year, the 23-24 school year, students that turn five between 
September 2nd, 2023, and April 2nd, 2024 are automatically eligible to enroll in TK. Students that turn five by September 1st should enroll in kindergarten, and students that turn five on September 2nd or after will enroll in TK. So those are our firm uh, TK and kindergarten enrollment dates. So uh, this week, actually, we've been uh, working with state officials, and they really talk about how the goal in the future is for TK and K to be really a two-year kindergarten process. And the, these first years, TK and K, or even if your student goes directly to kindergarten, are really critical schooling years. So in transitional kindergarten, through kindergarten and first grade, our students are really acquiring those uh, skills, knowledge, and really dispositions as learners that establish the foundation for being lifetime learners and being successful students. Children achieve those skills through understanding that's done through strategically sequenced instruction. And that's a pretty big phrase, but I want to assure you, and I look here at my TK and kindergarten teacher and know how much time and care and planning they put into designing the TKK day and really how important it is for them to have students present and for them to be there on a regular basis so that they get that consistency that is so important in the early years of schooling. I've often heard families say, well, it's just kindergarten. And I'm here to tell you, it is not just kindergarten. Kindergarten and TK and first grade are foundational years for developing the skills and the mindset of what it means to be a student, a scholar, a learner. And we're also very careful to make sure that the activities and the materials and uh, really the environment of TKK and first grade are developmentally appropriate for our students. And when you go in and see the classrooms, maybe you'll take a tour at your neighborhood school or one of the other schools, you'll really see the time, the care, the attention that our teachers put into those rooms to make sure that they're developmentally appropriate for their students. So I want to uh, reintroduce to you Mrs. Stovall, who is a, I don't want to say seasoned veteran, very experienced uh, TK teacher mm -hmm. in our school district, so much so that this year she became a teacher on special assignment to help all of our TK teachers and programs in our school district. Uh, and then I also want to introduce you to Mrs. Begg, who is a kindergarten teacher at Banyan Elementary School in Newberry Park. So I welcome both of them here this evening, and they're going to share a little bit of information with you. All right, well, I'm very happy to be here tonight to share with you my passion about TK and how wonderful I feel our program is in our district and how much we are supported at the district level to, like Dr. Sellis, Dr. Seller said, make our program as developmentally appropriate for children as possible. So you might wonder what a day in TK looks like, and it's a busy, fun, hopefully noisy environment where kids are exploring and being exposed to some of those guiding anchors, which we'll talk about in a second, and the kids are interacting with one another, developing their language skills and learning how to get along with one another. So when you walk in, you might see a combination of what we call self-directed play. And these opportunities are maybe um, put out by the teacher, but within that activity, it's very purposefully a play. So the kids sometimes don't always know they're learning because what we're doing is um, more of an activity that they have interest in. And, and at this age, you know, they're, they are very intrinsically motivated. So to have something that sparks their interest makes the learning a little bit more exciting for them. We also do um, every day, and actually the state recommends that we do an hour a day of what we call uninterrupted play. So during that time, the kids are getting to choose more what they want to play, maybe the dramatic play center or the block area or uh, with some manipulatives, magnetiles are super um, popular in TK. So the kids are there 
um, constructing their knowledge through their play, interacting with their peers, having that time to just really get into what they're doing and knowing that it's a time where they can feel safe to take risks and enjoy what they're doing. We also have a lot of outdoor time and that includes our recess and our lunch time. So there's a recess where they'll have a snack. There's lunch time where they can be given the school lunch or bring a lunch from home. And it looks different from site to site where the kids eat, but often it's just them at a table with their TK peers and um, learning how to talk and eat at the same time and waiting to play is sometimes um, what we're working on, but the kids definitely have a time to interact with one another. We do expose the kids to these academic pieces that they will get a further instruction on in kindergarten. So that includes letters and numbers, the, uh, the sounds of the alphabet. We do a lot of phonemic awareness and recognizing the parts of a book and getting kids familiar so that when they're ready, they can start that reading process. And we, you know, do a lot with math, with counting and shapes and patterning and sorting, uh, calendar time, and making that uh, part of their day as well. I mentioned earlier something called that purposeful play. So with purposeful play, we want to make sure that the kids are um, having opportunities to reach those benchmarks that we have for them, but through that we try to make those activities a little bit more hands on so that again like i mentioned they don't necessarily realize that they're they're working on a skill and so we want to make sure that that play that we're providing them is something that they um invites them to be engaged and promotes those peer interactions and encourages problem solving uh, it's very concrete a, a very concrete way for children to learn at this young four-year-old age Currently this year, we have a, a ratio of one to 12. So that means there's two adults in the classroom at all times. So both these of the adults work together to help support the district um, in you know, academic topics that we're covering with our curriculum, World of Wonders. And um, we're able to really have that ability to assist the kids with all these experimentation opportunities and um, exposure to help them hone in to be ready for kindergarten. So our guiding anchors are developmentally appropriate. So we balance that readiness skills towards the kindergarten standards, but we're keeping them developmentally appropriate and making sure that they're, they're not necessarily um, paper and pencil, but maybe learning your letters through a sensory table and learning the difference between um, the you know, letters might have lines or curves and visual discrimination. So a little bit more developmentally appropriate. We do a lot of phonemic awareness, which is helping them understand up here what um, sounds make and rhyming and all those things so that when they are ready to transfer it to print, it comes a little bit easier. Another guiding anchor is our oral language and literacy development. So all kids at this age are working on building that vocabulary. They're being exposed to literacy opportunities that encourage them to have that oral language and you know, the reading and the writing that comes along with that. Another um, important guiding anchor, and sometimes I feel is one of the biggest things TK, and I, what I about is the social development with explicit instruction to help that executive functioning skills where they're, they are um, learning how to express themselves and use their words to help them with what they're feeling. And we are able in TK to take a lot of time to have a lot of great stories and experiences and stop what we're doing and focus on how to make them um, a great citizen and feel that, that safety and that excitement to come to school. So this next slide here is something that we wanted the TK families and even K families to look at, um, as Dr. Sellers said, the state is guiding this new age guideline for TK. Our district 
has had junior K and TK for gosh, almost 14 or 15 years now. And it's, it's changing and the ages are, as the ages change, we're going to have to adapt as well as what, what our curriculum looks like and how we are, um, what we're providing for the kids. So we wanted to make you aware of this great site. There's a QR code here that you can scan and it's got so much information for you about the, the ages for TK, it talks to you about what will what you'll see in a TK classroom. Um, so just a very big wealth of knowledge for your parents that we wanted to make sure you have this TK California um, site that you can look at and answer any questions. Um, thank you, Mary Beth. It's always hard to follow you because you have so much information to share. <laughs> um, my name is Susan Begg, and I teach kindergarten at Banyan Elementary. And um, as Mary Beth has said, for TK, we are just the next building block um, in that process. When we go from transitional kindergarten to the to the kindergarten program, you're going to see a lot of similar things in the classroom um, that you would see in a TK classroom, but just taking it to that next level. When you walk into a kindergarten classroom, you're going to see kids working sometimes in small groups, or you're going to see them working as partners, working with a lot of manipulatives with pattern blocks and using those problem solving skills that they were introduced to when they were in that TK classroom. We try to do a lot of hands on learning to build some understanding so that they can work together. Um, when we're doing our small groups or our individual learning with those kids. In kindergarten, we have a standard based instruction. So we're working for specific benchmarks for those kindergartners to achieve from the beginning of the year and they build. So at the beginning of the year, we're looking that they're going to have the recognition of all their uppercase and lowercase letters. And that builds as the year goes on to building to the sounds. And then as we start with counting, beginning of the counting skills, zero through 20, and then we're gonna end up counting to 50 to 100. And we build on those skills as, this, as the year progresses. Even though we're doing those academic things as well, we still like to incorporate a lot of art and hands-on activities um, in the classroom for kindergarten because that's it's supposed to be a fun place to be. So we make sure we include a lot of programs like we have Art of the Masters. We also do a lot of clay projects. And as we're doing our activities in the kindergarten classroom, even though we may have, we have fine motor skills that we're working on. So we're gonna do a cutting and pasting and painting activity. So we try to incorporate a lot of the skills that we're gonna be doing into each of the activities that we do in our classroom. As we do these activities, we're building the confidence. We're building those confidence for the, through the kids. We're doing that through song. And we'll hear the kids as we go through the day, hum as we're doing our independent center time. They're singing the songs that we were doing in our small group activity um, further on in the daytime. And it's kind of fun that those they're building those skills and that confidence level as they do that. Um, we're working on fine motor skills. We're looking on cutting. We're working on coloring and gluing, drawing, painting. Each of our um, benchmarks come from our district and the, there are essential skills that we're learning in for kindergarten. And we have the social emotional learning as well and activities that we do, lots of great stories and activities. One of the things that we have our counselors do is come into our classroom and talk about Kelso and Kelso comes and teaches the kids and we have a poster so that they can understand what they're going to do to work through these emotional things that they're gonna have, what they have. Um, a, a disagreement with a partner on the playground. How are they gonna handle those skills and how are they gonna work through that? Um, working with the re relationship with their peers. And then again, going back to that problem solving skills and talking about how they're gonna work through those. Um, kindergarten is a very fun place to be and we try to make it as exciting and the best learning experience that we can because it needs to be that pivotal time in that child's life where they look back and have that fond memory of yeah kindergarten was the place to be and it was a lot of fun and an enjoyment for them so thank you mrs bag So if your child has a disability, we want to reassure assure you that students with a disability are provided uh, direct services to support their unique needs. Every elementary school has a special education teacher. Um, and if your child's disability is such that they require a higher level of services, we do offer specialized programs for TK age students at some of our elementary schools. Uh, and if you're um, 
child is one whose primary language is one other than English, we do have integrated and designated services um, for your student built into their day. These are designed to strengthen their English speaking, writing, and comprehension skills. And we also have bilingual paraeducators and facilitators at each elementary school site to help your students acclimate and um, work on those skills as well. So um, in the initial slides, we talked about your neighborhood school and registering at your neighborhood school, uh, but we also do have in our school district a process called school choice. Um, and the school choice is a process where you can select or apply to attend a school other than your neighborhood school. So all of our CVUSD schools are considered schools of choice. Um, and as long as a school is not filled to capacity, uh, with existing students and incoming neighborhood students, students that live in a different neighborhood can apply to attend another school. Uh, we did have um, an old rule, and we want to clarify that old rule that now TK students do not need to apply for school choice. If you do apply for school choice to attend a school other than your neighborhood school for TK or K, you automatically then are staying in that school through fifth grade. So you don't have to reapply in kindergarten. And then there's information on our district webpage specifically for school choice. So when you go to that enroll button, you'll see an option for school choice applications. I do wanna share uh, the school choice deadline. I'm gonna say it a couple of times. It is coming up soon. That is actually why we are having this uh, webinar now is because it's just before our school choice deadline at the end of January. Included in our school choice process are our magnet schools, our schools with specialized programs. So I want to just share those with you briefly. The first is Acacia Magnet School. It's a magnet school for school-wide enrichment. Um, it's called the Acacia Magnet School for Enriched Learning. And so students uh, develop their own individual talents at Acacia uh, through the subjects they're learning, but also pursuing their own passion interests. Our Cypress Elementary is an international baccalaureate school or IB school, part of the what's called the primary years program in interbaccalaureate. Last year we were, or this year I guess, we were proud to open our first dual language immersion program and school in CVUSD. And so we currently have three kindergarten and one TK class at Caneo Elementary that are dual immersion classes for Spanish and English. For next year, uh, those kindergarten students will be matriculating to first grade, and so our dual language immersion program at Conejo Elementary will have TK, kindergarten, and first grade students for the 23-24 school year. We also have the Earth's Magnet School in our school district, and it is a magnet school for environmental science and technology. And finally, we have the Ladera Stars Academy, which is a STEAM school, science, technology, arts, and rigorous scholarship. So all of those are schools that you may be interested in uh, touring, or maybe you're lucky enough to have one of those schools as your neighborhood school besides Earth. So this is a chart of those magnet schools and specialized schools. It just lets you know over time um, what the openings are. So Acacia, Cyprus, our Caneo Dual Language Immersion Program and Ladera Stars Academy all have TK and kindergarten classes. Earth's Magnet School does not have a TK program. So that school starts in kindergarten. And our Open Classroom Leadership Magnet will only have grades three through five for this coming school year. And this shows you what I was just sharing, that all of these schools besides Earths have neighborhood school enrollment. So if you already live in that neighborhood, you do not need to apply for school choice except at Earths Magnet School. And again, there's that priority application period for school choice that ends on January 31st. So here's that overall timeline for school choice. So school choice applications actually were made available November 1st, but because it's part of a lottery uh, for all applications that come in 
for this priority deadline, you don't need to worry if you're just learning about the school choice process because all applications that are received by 11.59 p.m. on January 31st are in the same lottery and are weighted the same. Then on March 16th is when we anticipate to mail out the initial decision letters from our first lottery. And then August 17th is the last day to apply for school choice for the next school year. And September 30th, we cancel our school choice wait list. So what that means is that if you applied for school choice and you don't get your school of choice before the first day of school, that school choice wait list stays open. And if we have openings, even if you've started another school, we will offer you a space at the school that you applied for and you have the ability to accept or decline. After January 31st, you can still apply for school of choice, but any applications received after January 31st will just be placed in line on first come first serve after the initial lottery applicants. I do want to share with you one opportunity that um, parents have asked about in the chat, which is what we call extended TK. So extended TK is for students whose birth dates fall outside of the range, but after the range. So this is for, um, as we shared, students with birth dates up to April 2nd, 2019 are automatically able to enroll in TK, but we do often have some spaces available after the birth date range students are enrolled. Of course, we don't know what this will look like because we have a new birth date range this year for TK, but we wanna give you the ability to let us know that you're interested in, this, in attending TK for students with birth dates April 3rd through May 31st, 2019. So these students will be given an opportunity to request placement and we'll open up that after our school choice process is complete. Uh, these placements, some may happen in the spring, but most likely throughout the summer and even after school has already started. So this is not um, an, a process where you will hear right away about a decision for extended TK. It will be sometime through the summer or as we shared like in the end of August when we're already in school. You will be offered attendance at whichever schools have space that most likely will not be your neighborhood school. When we were able to offer extended TK spaces this year, it was mainly at three or four schools that had openings, but not at every school and most likely not at your neighborhood school. And this is a quick turnaround because these are families that have been waiting to hear for a long time. And so, for example, if you're a family that lives in the Wildwood attendance area, um, but we have an opening at Aspen, we will let you know that there's an opening at Aspen Elementary and you have 24 hours to let us know whether you want that spot or not. And so Mrs. Ware, who is here, uh, will be your main point of contact once we begin the notifications and letting you know which schools have openings. And now I wanna reintroduce Amy Mills, our Director of Child Development. Okay. Um, I think we are very fortunate in that our district is able to provide child care at all of our elementary school campuses. Um, we do not have child care at Conejo and Glenwood, but they have an alternate program there that you can inquire about. So we are a parent pay program, and um, which just means that families make monthly tuition payments. So our, uh, the different programs that we offer, we have an enrichment program, which is for transitional kindergarten and our kindergarten students, which is typically from 1.30 to 2.30. So this is something where parents a lot of times use this service if they're picking up an older child um, that gets out at 2.30. So there's that gap there in time. Um, during the enrichment hour, our staff um, have a circle time. They build on skills that students may be learning in the classroom, and they do this through play, art, um, science projects, and games. And then we also offer a full-time option, which includes the morning. Um, so we open at 7 o'clock, and then uh, we are there until 6 o'clock. So you would have the full day. Um, if a TK or kindergarten student attends in the morning, our staff will walk them to their classroom when it, um, it's time for school to start. 
And then our staff pick up all TK and K students from their classrooms um, at the end of school and walk them back to the child care room so they don't go on their own. Um, child care registration for next year begins April 17th and it opens at 730 in the morning. Um, so um, you can be sure to check our website for details on that. Um, we do have priority registration for our currently enrolled families, which will begin April 3rd. I do want to say if you submitted a school choice application and but you haven't heard back yet um, if you were accepted and you really need childcare, I do encourage you to apply on that April 17th date. Um, our child care spots at most of our schools tend to fill up quickly. So I don't want you to wait and then maybe not get a spot and end up on a waiting list. Um, and then we do offer summer camp options and registration for camp will begin March 13th. And again, we have details on our website about that. Let me know there's a QR code you can scan here um, that will take you directly to our website as well. Um, I Thank you, Amy. I want to share with you that our elementary schools have amazing social media platforms that um, they're posting consistently this school year to share with you all of the amazing things that are happening at the different school sites. So even if you're not sure which school you want to attend, but you have an idea of schools that are near you, you will definitely want to follow our schools. Um, I suggest following on Instagram as a main uh, page for them. Um, and there's some examples from Acacia, Westlake Elementary, Ladera Stars Academy, and also Aspen Elementary. Uh, CVUSD also has an Instagram page. That's the QR code that's there. And that gives you lots of timely information about enrollment, school choice, extended TK, uh, but also just important information from our school district with dates and holidays and calendars and big announcements like seven of our CVUSD schools being announced as California Distinguished Schools just last week. So we are so proud of our school sites and all of the amazing things that are happening there. And we're glad to share that with you and showcase that on our school's Instagram account. So please do um, check those out. I also strongly encourage you to visit the schools through the school tours and their websites. And so you just contact the front office of each elementary school that you want to tour and find out from them what they're offering uh, for tours. Some may have like a weekly tour option on the same day, same time. Some may have periodically scheduled tours. So please do contact them and, and take advantage of the opportunity to go inside and see what's happening in our TK and kindergarten classrooms. And just a additional plug on our California Distinguished Schools. Um, in Ventura County, there were only nine public elementary schools that uh, had this recognition, and seven of those nine um, are Kaneo Valley Unified School District. So it's good numbers, I think. It's very good numbers, a testament to everything that's happening at those schools. So we're very proud. So uh, that is the end of our formal presentation. Uh, we will be here. You can see we've answered 22 questions so far in the Q&A that um, people have entered. So we will stay here and continue to answer the questions in the Q&A. But that is the end of our formal presentation. I want to thank my fellow presenters and also, of course, Mrs. Hernandez for doing our interpreting this evening. Um, but yes, if you have all your questions answered and you feel fully prepared to register your TK and K student, you do not need to stay on with us anymore. But if you um, have any questions or want to see what questions others may ask and see their answers, feel free to stay on. So thank you so much. It was good to see all your names in the participant section this evening. And uh, we can't wait to see you at our elementary schools. Uh, the same question has come up a couple times about how do I know where my neighborhood school is? Um, and the, on that enroll my student section on our district webpage, there's what's called a school locator. And you just enter your address into the school locator and it will tell you what your elementary school, middle school and high school are. 